so it's Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? No, it's Wednesday. So it's Wednesday, and you know, we've got an 80-point overnight range, big sell-off yesterday, so we're expecting a lot of volatility. Um, so much so that as a human, I'd be afraid to trade this. I would, you know, and we're, we're watching it open now and getting a sense for you know, how, how violent or not is the open. And one thing you can do also is look at, the, look at how the market, look at the depth here on, on the dome. It looks thicker than I've seen it in cases when on days when it's super volatile. But um, as a human, I'd be really careful about uh, trading this, and I'd be I'd be looking at um, you know, kind of my normal view of the world would be wave volume signals only uh, only enter on breaks and uh, only with buy or sell stops. Um, what I saw in simulation was that the the, the, the machine learning system can easily keep up. And there's not a question of speed issues. Um, and that you either, you know, you get whacked right away, kind of like you do as a human if you try to do it, or you're able to really take advantage of, all of that extra movement. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to go for it. Um, you certainly have the option to simply not trade that day. And that's what I was originally expecting to do, but that's uh, kind of not what I saw. So we're, we're gonna get we're getting some we're gonna we're gonna get some real testing here. With 80 point overnight move is not small. That's a big move, and I would expect there to be a lot of volatility. All right, so this machine went short here on a 222. That's a failed turn. So again, <laughs> my my. Uh, favorite turning out to be my favorite signal I would be looking for the long there not the short and I got uh, tagged on the pullback there or on the retracement um, I would be looking for the long on the up bar or is what I would be doing there as a human <clears throat> okay, so next next trade looks like you took some slippage on that stop because it's um, Stop is supposed to be break even plus one. Yeah, okay, so some slippage on that. And then uh, I am using a, a limit touch main order here. Limit touch chase main order here to see if that helps with some of the issues we had yesterday where we had great signals but no fill because the market was just uh, moving so strongly. There's a short. We'll see if we're break as we break through this low. Pretty aggressive pullback short signal. Um, the, the other thing I saw yesterday that I liked was that at, after that nasty fall, the market, um, you know, ch it chopped sideways pretty badly, and the system did quite a bit better. So that's something that we had I'd specifically worked on the prior. Uh, because we saw that in the prior week, a lot of work that weekend. Okay, so we're at 20 ticks here, so starting to trail. Hard target of 30, and looks like we're probably gonna make just a few ticks here, unless this bar closes down. Okay, so five ticks. And we'll wait for the next trade. Well, it really brought home to me yesterday because I had stepped away at 7.15 and, you know, the market had been kind of quiet. We took one trade. I was at scratch. And then at the, I just looked at the end of the day and I was, you know, I was up $10. So I, was, I scratched and I went, okay, yeah, it must have been a boring day. Um, <laughs> instead, there was all this excitement. But when you look at what happened is, you know, there was a lot of activity. You, I, you know, I, was, I was down, I was up, I was down, I was down, I was up. And there's none of that emotion, none of that ro roller coaster of, of uh, fear and joy that you have to deal with. It just, oh, okay, I, I scratched that day. And so that's a big deal. Um, and instead of uh, you know sitting here watching it going, you know, you know, getting excited and happy when you're up, and then getting upset and and fearful when you're down, and then it's gone. It's completely gone. Um, what I do and I, what I would recommend everyone does is 
just review the review what happened so that you can see that a the system is doing what it's supposed to do because it's new and that you understand it's doing what you understand it should do because maybe you've made a mistake in the in the codes that you've you've specified you want to take and then ultimately you know you're going to make you're going to make adjustments on how aggressive or conservative you want to be so you might go and change you know, you'll change this uh, this set of codes to something more or less aggressive so i've got i've got some base sets here conservative moderate and aggressive um, I'm trading with this moderate set right now. Um, a good yesterday is a good example. The mo the aggressive set would have really done better yesterday. Uh, you'd have taken more losses, but there were there were more opportunities to uh, to get into these quick runs. So it's interesting because what I've taught in the past is that you want to approach the day like okay, I'm 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 either gonna you know take my losses that I've defined and I, I know what that I know what that, that that amount is I know what the worst is or I'm gonna turn a profit and then you go about you, you go you go about making your trading decisions always trying to keep that mental that mental state it's gonna be one thing or the other and I'm just gonna do the best I can and now that is almost personified because eight days now of live trading and that's it is so easy to go okay well I'm either gonna be up or I'm gonna be down and there's nothing that I'm not gonna do anything to change that outcome there's nothing I can do that's my that's my that's my approach I could get in there and start tweaking and fiddling and and I think you're missing the point if you're doing that um, and it's easy it's the easiest trading I've ever done Here's a case where we place the order short, all right, not, not touched. Now it got touched, and it should start to chase because it got touched, but I don't see any chasing behavior happening. That's interesting. All right, so now we got filled, and we'll either, and we'll just take a stop. Uh, yes, I guess I don't understand how this limit touch chase works because I did see, I very clearly saw the market I very clearly saw the market. Um, okay, so with that loss, we went short up here on this turn, took a loss, and now the loss is minus 120. And so what happens here, you know, the the the, the Sierra chart study is tracking that loss, the daily the daily loss. Where is it? It's in here somewhere. And what I've done is specified. Okay. I'm not willing to, to lose more than $110, well, $110, or rather, if you get to a, a, a closed daily P&L loss of $110 or more, stop trading. And you can see that here because the you know, this cell here is now the number one. The formula is changed from zero earlier to one now and now the spreadsheet said you simply it will not send any more orders period and that's how we automatically control the the loss now the question is why is it set to 110 and the answer is that I'm, I'm willing to take three losses which is $150 if I set it to 150 though I can easily find myself losing more than that because you if you lose let's say you're down $145 well the system's still gonna place a trade because that's less than 150 all right and so if that trade is also a loss then now you're down 195 all right so basically what I did is I went well okay what you want to do is if you're willing to take three losses calculate what two of them are and then add a tick or two for slippage so you'll get three my point is you you, you get three tries so at fifty dollars uh, per trade that's a hundred dollars so I gave it a hundred and ten I said uh, if your if your max daily loss is is um, 
equal to, you know, if you're down $110, stop trading. If you're down 105, take another trade. Okay. That's how you that's how you calculate that out. And this is how we control it. So very you know, in a completely unattended way, without any, any work on my part, the system is done for the day now. For good or ill, all right. It may be that that's a really sad choice because the market's going to make lots of nice moves now, and I'm going to get all these all these great entries, which I'm going to miss, and I'm going to be really sad at the end of the day that I missed out on all that opportunity. It may be that the market's going to continue to be ugly, and I'll just take loss after loss after loss. We don't know. It's the whole point of trading is that we we don't know what the future holds, and so that's why we manage our risk. What I like about the way this works is that it's completely 100% managed elsewhere, and it is what it is. All right. So looking at the market now, I'm I'm currently sad because there's a two zero two short, and I'd be in that trade and you know possibly making up for uh, that earlier loss. But it doesn't matter. You can you can spin yourself in, in, into scenarios where you think you you should violate those rules, and ultimately you'll regret that. So. This is all completely system enforced, and the, one of the reasons that unattended or don't looking at, don't look at it as good is that you, you don't put yourself in a position where you're you're tempted to do something that you shouldn't. And ultimately, we can't remove the fundamental nature. We can't remove the randomness from the market. It's it's fundamental to its nature, and so what we're doing is we're we're enforcing it in a way that, that will protect us. To the downside and can enrich us to the upside okay here we are at the end of the session now and let's see so I got taken out early and uh, what do we see next let's just look at the rest of the signals the that's a short that's gonna scratch and that's a short where you're gonna get it you're actually gonna stop on that little pullback right there but you can see the system is seeing this turn coming um, I don't get to take a part. Don't don't get to take part of it. Two seventy fours are too aggressive. Those are pullback shorts. You can see you can see that on these really strong days, you actually you actually are going to want to try to get in on those. Then some kind of standard chop here uh, after the big fall. I think there's some work to do here in trying to trying to stay away, from, trying to stay out of that. Uh, super volatile here. Just look at that. Look at the, these bars are drawing so weird. Um, this is all happening in seconds here. Uh, 286, oh my goodness, I just love that signal. Um, that's a short, so your entry would be right there. Actually, it would take lower. And it's a failed pullback, so it's saying, it, you know, the system is saying that, you know, this pullback that's occurring here, this pullback long is gonna fail. That's the prediction, uh, just a gorgeous signal. Turning out to be, th 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 those failed pullbacks and failed turns are just becoming my favorites. Uh, beautiful long there, though I think the system thinks you're choppy now. Uh, we need a better visual indication of that. And then um, more chop here. A long and a short. Another just one, uh, no, 122. This is a long. That, that, that thinks this, this is predicting that it's going to go up, so it's missing this turn here. Uh, da, 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 274, too aggressive, too aggressive. And there it is again, that just absolutely gorgeous signal from yesterday. We got this also where we couldn't get in. We placed the order, but the market moved too quickly. Here we would uh, very cleanly get in right there. What a, what a beautiful turn right there. 187 is, uh, is too aggressive, though. It, 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 you can kind of see why 187 says, I, I think that it's turning up. It's way too aggressive right there. Um, again, some standard chop here after making that gain. And then a short you won't get filled on, and that's it. Okay, so uh, let's see. Pretty volatile day. Not surprising given the overnight uh, session. Uh, and fortunate day for us because you I end up uh, getting taken out before kind of all the fun happens. That's the nature of volatility, though. I saw, I saw that very clearly in in um, real time simulation and then in then uh, replays. 
when I was making the decision on would I trade during these volatile conditions or not? Would I run the ML system? And my, my conclusion was it's absolutely worth it because you have days where you can do really, really well. Um, but you do have, day, you have you have more max loss days as a result of the volatility. And they typically work like this. You get taken out quickly and that's it. All right. So the advantage here of machine learning is that that risk management is is enforced. Uh, the discipline is enforced. It just does it. It just does it. And there's no it, there's no temptation by the machine to go do something it shouldn't do. It's not disappointed that it uh, is down and then trying to make up for that. None of the human stuff is involved. You know, turn the system on from 7:15 on. I had walked away, um, and it just is what it is. The the amount that i'm willing to lose is 150 okay um that says 120 and the reason that we stopped is that we take 50 dollars of risk per trade so the if i took another trade that would be 170 right if i took another trade it lost so that we stop actually I, the system here says this, this number 110 here says uh, stop if you reach 110 on on as a loss all right because that's gonna you know another trade would take me over all right would take me over 150 uh, so what I did is I said you know two trades of fifty dollars each is 100 and then I gave it another another uh, you know a, a tick of slippage so if you get to 105 down on the day it'll try again but if you get to 110 or more it's not it stopped all right so you can you got to think it through like that um, so the other thing to think about is uh, in volatile conditions like this for the small account trader, you know, our, our options are more, more limited. So if you're going to use a, a $5,000 account and take 1% risk per trade, that means you can only lose two or three times a day and you're done. All right. Um, so if you, in this particular case, it's pretty clear to me that had I, had I been able to continue to trade, I, I would have done fairly well. Um, but to do that, you got to have the capital and take less risk per trade. So a $10,000 account taking the same amount of risk per trade uh, can, you know, you can be wrong five or six times and still take the same total capital risk per day. So that's, yeah, that's life as a small account trader. And so uh, you just got to keep that in mind. Um, it's, an, it's unclear to me if it's actually better to do that. I, I haven't actually modeled it, you, you know, by, by trying because um, you know it's very easy for us us to focus on only the positive and not the negative. So we we will see these days where had I been able to stay in the market, I, I, I could have made more. But we'll forget about the days where um, I would have I would have hit that that larger max loss um, because I'm taking more trades. So something to keep in mind if you're going to actually think that way, you know, go do the work to model it and actually see. How does it work out? Um, you may find that uh, you know, what what you're doing is just as good or better than this other this other method that that would that would have you profitable on on this day on this particular day. Okay, that is it for today. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Markets continue to be wacky.